so let, let me just give you a little bit of my background because I, I want to use this kind of as a word of encouragement to you guys. Um, the uh, I'm obviously a pastor now, but I didn't start out that way. When I was in high school, I just knew as clearly as I have ever heard God speak to my heart, I knew that I was going to be a doctor. And I went to uh, a, a college that I specifically applied to because of its pre-med program. And so I went in as a dual major. I was a uh, pre-med biomedical chemistry major, and I was a business major. And I also then, in wanting to get ready for what I thought was going to be my career in medicine, um, I had a couple of jobs. One was in a lab, and another one was working in a, uh, as a medical assistant in an urgent care facility. And uh, ju- and I was loving all of that, and, and it was great. And just as clearly as I heard God say that you were going to be a doctor, I can remember the, the day laying sideways across my bed with my organic chemistry book down on the floor as I was trying to memorize all these things, and I just as clearly heard God speak to me, you're not going to be a doctor. And for a number of years, I kind of struggled with that. Like, did I miss something somewhere? Did I not hear God the first time? But it took me a number of years before there was a story that I read in the book of Acts that I realized I had actually been reading it wrong. It's in Acts chapter 8. It's a story about Philip. And he is speaking in Samaria, and amazing things are happening. Um, People are getting healed. Demons are getting cast out of people. Uh, People are turning their lives over to Jesus. It is an amazing revival that's taking place. And... uh, Bible doesn't record for us. Luke doesn't tell us how many people were like there in that church, but it was big and it was growing. And then it says that the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip and said, leave there and go to Gaza. On his way to Gaza, he sees a chariot out uh, in the uh, wilderness and the Holy Spirit again speaks to him and says, get close to that chariot. And when he does, he notices the guy's reading from Isaiah. And he says, do you understand what you're reading? He says, no, not unless somebody explains it to me. So Philip not only explained to him what Isaiah was talking about, but made the connection to that Jesus is the fulfillment of these prophecies in Isaiah. And this official ends up giving his life to Jesus. And historians trace the arrival of Christianity in Ethiopia all the way back to that encounter. But here's where I read the Bible wrong. I always read it as the Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go to Gaza. And that's not what the words are. The words are, get on the road that goes to Gaza. So if God had said to me, hey, Craig, I want you to study to be a doctor. I want you to work hard in your classes, try to get A's and everything. Get a job in that field. Work really hard on those jobs. Learn a lot of things. But you're never going to be a doctor later on. How well would I have done in those classes? How well would I have done on that job? I mean, I would have just been said, I'm just here just to get a paycheck for a little while, right? So I think that there are times that God has to put something out in front of us that is the goal that we're heading for, but that's not where he actually wants us to get. He wanted Philip to intersect with that Ethiopian official. That was the only guy, apparently Philip was the only guy that was going to be able to help this guy make sense of what it was that he was reading and ultimately bring Christianity to an entire nation as a result of that. And so, guys, listen, this is the thing that we have to, when we go back to the Bible, we either believe what it says or we start playing games with it. So when Proverbs says things like, in our hearts we plan our course, but God directs our steps, we either believe that God does direct our steps or we say, well, maybe I have to figure things out on my own. In Romans chapter 8, it says that God is working all things together to accomplish his purpose. I went to the Greek language and looked up that word all, and it means all. It means everything that we go through. God is using that to accomplish his purpose. And so all of the experiences that I had studying in pre-med classes and business classes, the experiences that I had at the urgent care center and in the laboratory. Then after I graduated, I went to pursue the business world, the experiences that I had there, the way that God used my business to to be able to open up doors for me to work with nonprofits and churches and parachurches. All of those things prepared me. I was on that path. There were things that I learned prayerfully, 
hopefully I, I believe that there are people whose lives I intersected with that I put their life on a different trajectory because God had me on that path right alongside them, even for maybe just that brief moment.